Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of A Cup of Joe. My name is Joe Escobedo, and with me on the show today is Kathleen Chan. Thank you so much for being on the show, Kathleen. Hi, hi, Joe. Nice to uh, nice to see you, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. So Kathleen is a business development manager at one of the top tier insurance firms here in Singapore. And so today, Kathleen, I'd love to get your thoughts on three specific things. The first of which is really being stuck in the middle. So how do you manage both corporate and financial advisor sales? The second is because you work with a non-tied um, cha channel, excuse me, meaning that financial advisors yep. can work with whichever company they want, how do you get them to work with your organization versus others? Okay. And the, the third thing obviously is now that, you know, a lot of people are still working from home, at least until the end of the year, how do you keep the financial advisors engaged, keep them motivated during this time? All right, all right. Thanks for asking this uh, questions. Uh, I think maybe just to give a background, yeah. So although I say they manage the financial advisory channel, meaning that yes, I do work with tight, uh, non-tight uh, firms like IFA firms and such. So basically, they are very open. It's a very open insurance plat uh, firm where there's open insurance platform where they have about in terms of life insurance, some they have onboarded up to twelve. To advisors have so much to choose from and I think that's always the challenge for, for me as a business development manager or account holder to you know go down and meet meet the advice I uh, meet the advisors, you know, talk to the management staff and see what what how we can, can we cooperate to you know to grow the business together. So in terms of man yes, although I'm I would say I'm kind of stuck in the middle, yeah, but lack of better words, stuck in the middle. So yes, corporate wise, yeah, we do have certain as we corporate wise, there's always, you know, the, the there are certain things you cannot change, like the the business processes uh, or you know certain corporate uh, operations wise. That's pretty pretty fixed according to my company's uh, policies and uh, and processes. And then as with any uh, as with IFAs, okay, uh, these independent financial advisory firms, they are each and every firm has their own culture. So it's really, and it's uh, as for me as a account manager or business development manager to go down and to really understand what is the culture of each company it's like. I think as for a start, because corporate wise, you know, you can't really change them, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, we can always work around it. But the main thing is for me to understand, you know, uh, the my com the company, uh, the companies, the firms that I that I work with, their culture, the people. You be yes, it is. It's kind of uh, thing is that the culture of the company attracts a certain kind of people. So it's mm. pretty easy to figure out after a while, and then uh, after this is to really just understand what what they need, what are certain restraints, and how they work uh, operationally. Because in terms of new business submissions, their operations, you know, certain certain things that you know they they are struggling with, and I will see that uh, as a person as a person in the middle. It is, it is my job as the advisors come to me, there are certain things that they don't understand in terms of products, in terms of new business processes, or a lot of operational wise, um, in terms of uh, to handle their clients' uh, applications, policy servicing. It's a little bit hard to, for them to digest, especially when they are dealing with so many uh, different insurance firms. Yeah, and they need, they need, as for me to come in is to kind of like, I'm, I'm like the middleman, in a sense, to help them navigate, you know, the the uh, my my company's uh, my company's roadmap or processes and all these things. Not really. Um. So in terms of managing wise, I always um because my I I always manage the advisors or the firms' expectations. So because they are, you know, sometimes advisors say that, hey, how come this so and so company can do this, whereas my company can't do that. And then of course I would come in, explain to them that you know different companies have different processes and everything. But you know what? Let's try to let let me let let me find out what exactly is going on, and I'm try to help them to to resolve the issue without having you know to to bring them the least form of frustration to them because you know they have to handle so many things at one go. And I think my job is also to provide a solution for them, and and. And for me, as a, with the corporate wise, of course, if I can help them push things further, like say, for example, in terms of, you know, uh, more more tricky underwrite, uh, medical underwriting cases where you think that there's there's room for negotiation. Okay, of course, it's my job to, I won't say my job, but I think it's it's for me to also talk to the talk to the relevant people in, in my company, 
uh, to help them to uh, understand why is this so and so appealing for this and, and all these things. Hopefully they come, you know, come to understanding and consensus to move things forward. And of, yeah, so this is a, usually on a day-to-day -day basis, I think, uh, to understand how my company works and also at the same time, I think on the, and then to really, really help to know my stuff well, okay, at the same time, products, processes and all these things, but also at the same time to be able to under, manage, manage the advisors and the firms in a way to, to sometimes put that, put myself in their shoes, you know, to, to let, you know, sometimes it's that they, they can be a little bit, you know, uh, loud. Uh, especially when they can't get that, can't they can't understand certain things, and it's for me to, you know, to just uh, calm them down and take, tell them what's going on and see how how I can help them together. After all, you know, it's it's in a way to to grow the business and all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you must have incredible mm -hmm. interpersonal skills and patience. I think to deal with you know that many stakeholders with that many needs and that many kind of complexities yes. on both ends. Uh, it sounds like quite a quite a juggling act. Um, one thing you mentioned that I thought was quite interesting was understanding the culture of each mm -hmm. respective group. I'd love to find out more about maybe one example of uh, culture within a particular organization you work with, how you understood mm -hmm. it, how did you yeah. navigate that? Okay, so uh, when I first joined, a, uh, when I first joined my 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 company recently last uh, a year about a year ago i was handed this very new accounts and then my my colleague who told me is like oh this is so hard this is so difficult they are like a weird bunch of people and i was like okay um uh and i was like okay uh, i was a bit scared at the moment but of course it took me a while to just really start to talk to the uh, basically the stakeholders first really firstly to find out how they work because they are a little bit more stringent in terms of their underwriting processes, operational wise, and they're very more stringent in terms of they ask a lot more questions when they are they we want to, you know, introduce them new 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 products, you know, hopefully that they will onboard our products. They will they will they Usually, uh, com other companies, the product takes about maybe maximum one month to onboard a, a product. But for th for them, they took me three months, and they have they asked a lot of questions. But so so for them, that's where I I slowly come to realize that hey, they um, rather than seeing them as like oh why they asking questions, so I actually went to further ask them like why 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 is it that you're asking this question? Can I know why so that I can predict further so that you don't have to keep asking me back and forth you see so it was quite interesting to to once um so basically i also talked to a lot of different people from from different staff from i i do i do you know talk to their operations people i to talk to the product people and even talk to the investment people to to find out you know how they work even though it's a company but within a department itself they also have their own ways of doing things mm. so after that to to really be patient with um I think I have a lot of patience and understanding to, and then slowly, yeah, we, we form a quite a good working relationship right now, I guess in, in the sense that, um, yeah, it's really to take, take, take the time and not to, yes, are there, were there sales targets to meet? Yes, there are, but I think the main thing is that if you're always, if, if you, if the foundation is not built well, okay, in terms of having a mutual understanding, then there, there will be, there, there will be a lot of uh, frustrations uh, along the way itself. So for, for me, it's uh, really just to talk to talk to different people who's in, in, in that in that particular company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as for the advisors wise, uh, because I so I also work very, very closely with all the advisors. So yeah, to, to find out like, hey, what, what are you guys, you know, looking at? How can I help you? What is it that you need? Because um, different companies have different age the advisors, the age group is very different. This particular one attracts very young advisors, more inexperienced. Ah, that's where I have to step in and say that, can I offer you uh, maybe product trainings that also at the same time to help you give some sales pitch to, to equip your advisors. And that way they really, like, oh, they, they find it very helpful and they are very willing to talk to you. Yeah. Mm. No, that's a good point. Understanding kind of the seniority as well. If it's, you know, fresh graduates or yes. new the market, obviously they need a lot more training education, not only in terms of products and be how to sell, how to network and do the usual things that a seasoned you know financial advisor knows very very well yes. so it's interesting to mm -hmm. identify where are the challenges the, the opportunities within yeah. The yeah that's right that's right yeah so uh yeah i like the job i i get i do like the challenges and uh yeah probably because maybe i like to solve problems <laughs> yeah so yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite a journey so far yeah i, I have a mm -hmm. well 
you know, solving challenges, I think one of the big challenges, I think not only in financial services, but also a lot of my clients are in tech as well, is, you know, working with different partners who can or are able to work with other companies as well. And how do you, mm -hmm. you know, influence them to sell your, yep. products, your services versus others? So once again, love to hear your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. uh, how do, because basically, yes, you're right that because, um, you know, for us, we are non-exclusive non then it's just that you know we, we we have the products you know why should we why should we sell we should why should we you know get your my my clients to buy your products instead and of course uh for for us i think mainly is that uh, first and foremost do we, we do need to have a very good understanding of my my own company's products mm -hmm. and a good understanding of what the market uh, is is going at right now so you know so for us is that we we can't just we can't just you know saying that, oh, these are key products, and this really good sell, 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 you know? But they don't want, it's like, what's the catch? So, and, and there are different, different seasons, they, they are promoting different products. So, so we have to follow, not be updated with the trend, follow the trend and see, and maybe feedback to the company to see what kind of support we need to, to, to equip, firstly, to equip us to, move, uh, to really speak to the advisors and, and influence the directors and the team managers. I think mainly, mainly is to influence that other than the product itself because we, we can't win in every category of a, of, of a product category. Okay, so I mean, of course, there are people who you know we, there are people who have certain opinions about certain different com diff, uh, insurance companies, but that's fine too. We can't change their opinions. But I think the main thing is that to to be consistent in terms of my ser service levels. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know, b basically, things simple is as simple as sometimes you know just. Um, I was just in before I was before we had this before I meet you. You know, actually, I was just handling a, 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 a advisor. She she doesn't seem to know like uh, what to fill up fill up the application form because it's the first time. So I had I you know she was screenshot to me WhatsApp me and it, it got to a point where I said you know what I just give her a call. So I just give her a call and explain to her step by step how to fill. And then she was like, oh, thank you so much. You know, I, I re I'm, I'm really lost. I don't know how to fill up the form because I got, I know I'm so used to, I never, I never submitted your case before. And, and that's why I realized that, you know, don't, don't despise the simple, simple things. Never, you know, never despise, like, I don't know how to fill up. Because the truth, the matter of fact, they really don't know. And um, they, that's why they're asking me for help, you see. So this, don't despise it and, you know, just answer them accordingly, you know, if they if you feel that they need more help than usual, this, then I would just actually take a take a step further to tell them, that, hey, if you're doing this, I think you, should, you also should take note of this just in case you, you, you might have left out because you're so new to submitting submitting uh, this this application wise. So, you know, just to give them a little bit more heads up and they, they really do appreciate that. I think the main thing is also be, be consistent, okay, be consistent in the sense that you know, out of sight, out of mind. You see, so to as as a as a account manager or as a business development manager, right? With when we are dealing with advisors with with so so many different insurance company to choose from, I think the best thing that one one of the advisors told me, I think it was quite a compliment for 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 me. I think is that you know what, Kat, I place the business with with uh, your company is because you're you're you are when I needed you and I and I need to contact you, you are always contactable. Yes. So the main thing is that yes, although I may not reply immediately, but at least I tell them, hey, I'm sorry, I'm in a meeting. Can I reply to you later? Or you know, if if there's a missed call, you always you know keep, try to try to remember to you know call them back. I think the consistency in terms of service level mm. and contactability is very important because um, ultimately these advisors really rely on on us, be, um, you know, as a business development manager to really help them navigate through their uh, um, navigate through the business process. They have, they have product questions to ask and sometimes it's quite urgent. So when, when sometimes I see messages, Kathleen is very urgent, can you call me back? So I'll quickly call them back and say, hey, hey, actually I'm in front of a client. I just need to ask this question before clients sign the paper, you know. So, you know, it sometimes that, that makes or break the deal. And yeah, so so for, for me, one of the influence is that really to, to just be uh, consistent. I think that's nothing. I, I think that it doesn't matter where, whichever sales you're doing, um, be it insurance industry, be it in, in any IT or tech products and anything. I think the main thing is to always be consistent. And I think the contactability is very important. Mm -hmm. After all, you can sell a product, but if you know, if there is no, con there's no follow up. And if you, if you need help and there's no one to help you, you know, ultimately people will, will, will play, will want to place as business elsewhere next time. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's a very competitive space. So for example, if you don't get back to someone there, it's very easy for them to switch over to another company. Or and like yes. said, it's so important because it's, it's make or break if they're especially new in the industry and they don't understand something, mm -hmm. they have a meeting, like you said, um, it could actually end up, you know, uh, you know the closing, they should, could end up not closing the deal because they don't, just don't know how to do it. Um, yeah. That's a very good point. Another thing you brought up at the very beginning, which I thought was quite good, is instead of taking a top-down approach, it's taking a bottom-up approach when it comes to feedback. So you mentioned yes. you know, speaking to different advisors to find out, you know, what kind of products mm -hmm. they're selling at different seasonal level and, and things like mm -hmm. that. And yes. know, communicating that back up the chain versus yes. you know, starting a corporate label and saying, okay, you have to yes. sell this. This is what we're coming up with. You have to sell this now, now, now. When yeah. uh, it obviously doesn't work. Um, okay, uh, ultimately, if the if my company produces a product that, yes, we were like, you know, question mark, you know, like, mm, question a little bit here and there, but it doesn't mean that it, there's no, I mean, to, to me, I think in Singapore, okay, all, all insurance products are good products and because, you know, it's it, it has gone, it has to go through very stringent process and everything, yeah, but the main thing is that there are some very new products or certain, a little bit different that we, mm, the company has, has introduced and we were like, hmm, okay, how, how, how can we, uh, how can we you know best angle this product itself but it's also this product was created because you was also through feedback from us because ultimately because we're such an open platform the first thing that they ask the first the first people that they ask about products itself is usually us because like hey you know what's going on in the market and we'll tell them the feedback and everything and of course sometimes you know you know it, it, it not everything you can't get everything that you want but at least yeah. it's something so so for us, it's that also to manage the, the, the um, also, of course, when a certain product is being introduced, so we just say that, hey, well, as a team, we sit down and say, hey, how can we angle this? How can, well, what, 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 what is the best angle and who, who are suitable? Because you, you can't, you can't sell, a, you can't sell a very long-term savings product to somebody to target a group of advisors. They are very old, more mature, you know, yeah. like in their forties, fifties, because their advisors are forties, fifties, they may not be suitable for them. But you know, who, who are the target advisors that we want to target? And, and we will go there and we'll keep getting in touch with them, you know, and share them, hey, we've got new products. It's also a way for us to and go in to say, hello, I'm here. I'm, you know, here I am here, you know, look at me, uh, remember me, all right? Yeah. So yeah. So it, it uh, yeah. So in a way, we are always trying to find find a way to to introduce new products, and also at the same time, yeah, we also also will take if there is opportunity to also feedback, you know, to to give keep the company the updates and how what's going on in the market, uh, yeah, for us to add value to to the company's um, you know product solutions, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it makes perfect sense. And you mentioned kind of the education piece, but you know, being you know, the educator helping them understand the right products for their right market and, and so on. So I think that makes makes a lot of sense. And the, yeah. last, the last thing I would love to get your thoughts on, particularly now when a lot of people are still working from home, and it's still difficult to go to those some of those face to face meetings and, and keep, you know, you talked about training mm -hmm. earlier. So I'd love to get your thoughts in terms of how you are keeping the financial advisors engaged and being motivated mm -hmm. and track range. Yeah, um, I, I guess I, I guess maybe just just to share with you, you know, what happened during circuit breaker. I think all of us are in a shock in the sense that hey, I can't meet anyone. I can't go out and stuck at home and and what to do. So of course, uh, you know, as a team, we we uh, as a department, as a team, we sat down and we said that well, how can we what can we do to engage the advisors during this period? I think these advisors are also very are in a loss also because it's like. They're so out, you know, they're so used to going out and meet people like, no, now I have to like, you know, meet them over Zoom and we have to conduct non face to face and, and because they're open platform, right? So can you imagine you have 12 different insurers, if you have 10 insurers, you have 10 different non face to face processes that they need to handle and all the things. It's very overwhelming for them. Yeah. So for, for us, I think uh, we sat down as a team to say that, hey, you know what, Let, let's, let's help them. My objective is, of course, yes, to to get in touch with advisors, but also at the same time to help the advisors, you know, to to navigate this this period in time, especially during the circuit breaker. Okay, then we will sit down and we will contact this uh contact the company, say that hey, we've got non face to face process. Do you need any help? We can come and do a company. Uh, we can come in as a company level to to just share my processes to to answer any questions and everything and if they are say that no it's okay then what we do is that we know i will normally contact the team manager the branch director say hey you know i know that this new processes to maybe just to motivate your your guys a little bit if you do need help 
you know, usually they don't mind because they want to, uh, they, they want to get in the know. And we come there and we break it down for them easier. And, and then also at the same time, I think in, in terms of engagement wise, I think sometimes, you know, your, your key producers or your key advisors, right? So you just drop them a call and say, that, hey, how's everything? How's everything going? Just ask them, you know, don't have to be like, everything about sales, just say, hey, is everything going okay or no? Because no? just make sure that you're, you're all right. And, and, you know, if you need anything, just let, let, let me know. Yeah, I'm more than happy to help. Just, just, just be there, you know, just say that there, there is someone there for you. Yeah, like it, you know, it sounds a bit cheesy, but yeah, that, that they at least they feel they feel comforted that, you know, if they if they are lost or anything during this period, they, they have help along. And I think one of the things is that um during this time, I think that the in terms of the investment market wise, uh the investment market was doing was roaring, was doing very well is because you know the prices drop and it was such a good time to go in and it's like, hey, you know what? Let uh you know we had the idea of like, you know what, let's do let's do a because we, we do have investment in products i say hey let's do a investment series rather than usually we have quarterly fund updates and i say why not we do an investment series you know thematic and then it, it because since they are trapped at home anyways right or most or home most of the time so it, there's nothing for them to do but maybe just to you know find out what's going on is i think it's the best time for them to also catch up what's going on in the market you know build up the knowledge and then we, we did this investment series and you know, get different fund houses to come in to share like different types of different of different kinds of funds in, in thematic funds or maybe we have a biotech funds today uh, talk today and then next week okay we are going to talk about this 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 and with this fund and all these things it, it, I, I have advisors to tell them hey, i really like this investment series it really keeps me you know i really want to find out about this these funds that i never got to find out so in a way, we, we come up with things that are that are people and it's also very relevant for them because they're also doing a lot of investments at the point in time. So, you know, a lot of uh, buying to uh, funds, uh, you know, and shares, they want to also update themselves in the market so that they don't look too silly. <laughs> so in a way that like, you keep them with, you know, okay, market points, da, 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 da. So that when they go to Zoom calls, they don't look so silly, you know, hey, what's going on in the market? Why are you recommending me this and that? Yeah, so in a way to, this is how we engage them. Yeah, so in a way that is still when they are um, right now during that time, I think most of right now most of the training are still online. But nonetheless, is that we, we just continue uh, everything it is it makes it feel like you know let them feel that everything is still as per normal. There's no uh, and we try to I think in this time my company also had decided to push more things to go online. You know, making things easier, can do soft copy. Last time, you, you know, in the previous time, you can't. Now you can do a lot of soft copy submissions. And it really eases the, uh, it eases the workflow so much easier, Where especially when they're still, even to now, they're still people who are not very comfortable to meet. Yeah, so in, in a way, and then to keep assuring them that, hey, you know what, don't worry, things, um, yeah, in fact, I feel that, you know, things have improved over this, you know, even though it's a pandemic. And I think right now, people are a little more settled down as we, as we can go out and meet and, that's where the moment where they when they announce the phase two, the first thing I do is say, hey, are you free for coffee? I haven't catch up with you. Let's do that. And they, they really like it that, you know, the first thing that they do, the, the, one of the things that I first do is to really, really keep in touch with my key advisors. Yeah, asking them for, you know, to meet, for lunch, for coffee, to catch up face to face. Yeah. And then they will have a lot of things to talk about other than just work and, and you know, and, and all these things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My... And so, I... yeah. So yeah. <laughs> well, there, there are two key points that I, li I liked a lot of what you were just saying. I think the first of which is is understanding the market and being proactive in, in sharing those opportunities with the advisors. I think it's a very good one. And the other thing that I really liked was around um, series. So rather than having a one off, having a series of different, you know, around a different theme, and then that way they look forward to it, and it also sustains the momentum as well. Because the thing with a yes, one off, right. it's it's like okay, it's it's they're there. You know, they may, like you said, going back to what you're saying is, you know, staying on top of mind and making sure that, you know, constantly, you know, um, thinking about them and at least providing resources and training for them. So the series helps sustain some of that momentum where a one-off maybe just kind of lose them quite easily. Yeah, that's true. And um, yeah, but because the main thing is that during this, during, even during this time, there were so many online trainings and it's also, they're so overwhelmed and, you know, you, you have to stand up. Yeah. So things that you know can it's like you know Korean dramas you know you watch one and one and after yeah so it's always a series right so it's sort of a bit like hey let's do something thematic the series four episodes of fun updates you know <laughs> like how we do in Channel News Asia <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. I love it no it's a very good tips I think for anyone in the training space like myself so 
Thank you for that, Kathleen. Uh, I think there's a lot of really good points in here, so I really appreciate you sharing your insights with everyone. Um, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. As you say, is, are we able to get in touch with you, or I, I'm sure you have enough messages, but like, if you want to find out more about what you do, or, mm -hmm. <laughs> or you want Instagram, or yeah, <laughs> I have I have an Instagram handle, but usually just about food. But I, I do have an e I do have a personal email. Okay. So it's a uh, Kathleen Chan um, wt at gmail .com. So I would probably just uh, I will just uh, send it send send my personal contact to you, and you can uh, for those who want to find a little bit more or get in touch with me, yeah, feel free to do so. I'm more than happy to meet uh, new people to network and uh, to just I think also to learn from one another. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, great, Kathleen. Thank you so much. And uh, if you're watching this or you're listening, thank, to you. thank you so much for for joining us. We really appreciate it. And hopefully there were some good takeaways that you could apply in your own organization. And uh, yes, we'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe, and uh, see you soon. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye.